Ever turned on your PC only to be greeted by a blank screen? Or stuck in an endless restart loop? Frustrating, right? What if I told you there's a way to fix these issues yourself without calling tech support? In this video, we'll reveal the step-by-step -step solutions IT professionals use to tackle black screens, infinite restarts, and even faulty capacitors. Whether you're dealing with a dead CMOS battery or a Windows registry gone rogue, we've got the fixes you need. Ready to become your own tech hero, let's get started. We'll continue talking about the different problems that PC components can have. Blank screen on startup. And we start by talking about the black screen at startup, which is usually bad news because it's quite difficult to analyze a problem if there is no information to display on the screen. So, let's see the different avenues to explore. To try to solve this type of problem, checked if Windows responds. To start with, it would be interesting to check if your computer and Windows have started together correctly. The idea would be to push the restart of your graphics drivers by pressing the keys at the same time. Windows plus control, plus shift, plus B. If you hear a beep after this manipulation, it means that Windows is reacting, and if not, then your computer has not started. Check the monitor and cable. One avenue to explore, even if it may seem trivial, is to check the connection of the screen. Unplug all cables from your monitor and plug them back in to make sure they are securely connected. You can also try a different type of connection. For example, if the cable that connects the screen to the computer is an HDMI, then you can try with a DisplayPort cable or even another HDMI cable. This will help you know if the problem is with the port or cable. You can even try connecting the monitor to another PC to see if it's not coming from the screen directly. Unplug external devices. A source of problem could be your external devices. You should try restarting your computer without the mouse, the keyboard, external drive, and any type of device in USB. When you have targeted and identified the device that is causing problems, well, you can try to update these drivers. Check the multi-monitor display. It is also possible that if your screen does not turn on, it is due to the display of the multi-screen which is poorly defined. For example, the display could very well be configured on a second screen that does not exist. And in this case, it would explain why your screen doesn't turn on. To check this point, simply press Windows plus P to bring up the multi-screen menu. In general, the first is the default option. To switch to the other displays, simply press the letter P and confirm with Enter. Restore BIOS defaults. If after everything we've just seen, it doesn't work, it would be interesting to restore your BIOS to defaults because it is the one responsible for starting your PC. To enter the BIOS, you usually have to press the F2 or delete key several times while the PC is booting. Then, once you're in it, you need to find the place where it's possible to load the defaults and then save and restart. It would also be interesting to check if your PC starts the right hard drive. To do this, you have to find the place where you have the boot options and position the hard drive in first in the boot order. Cleaning the inside of your case. After testing the software and external components, well, you should look inside your PC. A black screen can be caused by your computer overheating. It is very important to control the temperature of your PC. A well-ventilated PC helps extend its lifespan. So, turn it off, unplug any power source, and open it. To start, you could blow the fans a little to remove the dust that is accumulated there, testing the internal material. And finally, if after all this the problem is still present, well, you would have to test all the boards and components inside the case. To do this, the ideal is to remove each component and reinstall them, making sure that they are firmly attached. Time problem. 
Now let's move on to another problem, which is that of the date and time that resets each time it starts. If your PC always resets to a default date every time it boots, it's probably because of the CMOS battery. The CMOS component is a type of chip which is capable of storing information but also of keeping it even if the PC is turned off. This is possible with the help of a low electrical current supplied by a battery. And in general, the information stored there, well, it's the date and the time. If, at each start, you lose the time, then you should change this battery. In general, the battery has a lifespan between 2 and 10 years. Here is the list of different problems that can occur if the CMOS battery no longer works. The computer would have trouble booting. Continuous beeps will be emitted by the motherboard. The date and time will be reset each time it starts. Peripherals could become unresponsive. Drivers could disappear. And you might not be able to connect to the internet. Infinite restart loop. We are now going to talk about a completely different problem, which is that of an infinite restart or a restart loop. That is to say that your PC, restarting incessantly without ever succeeding, launched Windows, which is also quite difficult to troubleshoot because you never get to Windows. If this happens, it's because there is an error in the Windows System Registry database. The registry is, as the name suggests, a database that contains the configuration of the operating system and other software that is installed. A PC that restarts non-stop can be caused by three things. A Windows update gone wrong, a faulty Windows driver, or after installing new software. Basically, there is something in the Windows process that goes wrong and causes Windows to restart non-stop. This is a problem that has been following the Windows system for years. Automatic repair. If the PC has a restore point, then it could offer you to restore the system to an earlier date after trying to restart several times without success. But if the PC doesn't offer you anything after several reboots, then you'll have to get your hands dirty. But don't worry, because you won't get your hands dirty like a car mechanic. An IT support technician's hands usually stay pretty clean. Unplug external equipment. The first thing to do with this type of problem is to remove all the peripherals connected to the PC. Whether it's the printers, USB key, speaker, everything has to be removed. It's a bit like a circuit breaker that falls non-stop. Well, you have to proceed by elimination, unplugging all the devices connected to a socket and putting them back one by one until you find the disturbing element. For this example, by the way, it is often an electric kettle that causes problems. But hey, we're not here to learn the electrician's trade. After unplugging all the external equipment from your PC, we will try to do a raw reboot. To do this, you must press the power button for about five seconds, wait about 30 seconds, and press the power button again to start it. Normally, it is very likely that just with this manipulation, the PC will restart. Normally, access to safe mode. If the problem doesn't come from external equipment, it means that it's probably a software that is making a mess. The problem is that Windows restarts nonstop. So, in your opinion, how do you access the operating system to remove the software if Windows can't start, the correct answer is with the safe mode. In general, after several untimely reboots, the system will offer you to boot in safe mode to find the program that is causing the problem or to uninstall the latest system update, Windows Registry Reset. As we saw above, the cause can also come from a failure in the Windows Registry database. Since you are already in safe mode, you can try to back up the current registry and then restore it to an earlier date. Above all, never restore the registry without having created a save point. Factory reset. And if despite all these steps, the problem still persists, then all you have to do is do a factory reset of your operating system. Before you jump into this, 
Don't forget to back up all the personal data on the PC, capacitors. And before we finish the course, we're going to talk about capacitors, which can also be the source of several problems. Capacitors are electronic components. To differentiate them, here is a list of several components divided into different categories. A capacitor that becomes faulty can cause various problems for your PC. Like what? It may run slower than usual, or freeze and restart randomly, or else, not to start outright, it is therefore wise when troubleshooting a computer to check if there are no burnt out capacitors by taking a look inside the case. And to do that, we're going to learn to recognize them. Types of capacitors. But before that, we'll see how to recognize the two main types of capacitors. We have the polymer-based electrolyte capacitors and water-based ones. In general, it is the latter that break down more often. After that, polymer-based capacitors also fail, but not as often as water-based ones. Finding the wrong capacitors using a flashlight or a good light source, you can visualize all the capacitors in the circuit boards. You will need to check not only the main card, which is the motherboard, but also the other types of cards, such as the graphics card. There are several visual symptoms that can tell you if the capacitor is faulty. Like what? It is bulging or cracked. Or the electrolyte leaks, in which case a trace of rust is visible on top. What to do if you find a bad capacitor? If you find one or more HS capacitors, you have three options. First, you can repair the circuit board, replacing the wrong capacitor yourself. You can also completely replace the printed circuit board to prevent the other capacitors from falling out one by one, which is much more judicious. And if the capacitors are located on the main board, i.e. the motherboard, well, maybe in this case, you could consider changing the complete PC 